Hello and welcome to the channel. I am Frederick Ekmark and this is Life Through the Lens. So today we will be learning how to quickly find the balance on the foil board. This is a hot topic as it's the basic of being able to fly. As most new wing foilers we are used to larger boards, wave boards 8 or 9 feet, even sub boards at 10, 11 or maybe even 14 feet. Your average foil board is probably around 6, 6.5 feet or maybe even smaller at 5, 5.8 feet. That difference in size is not a small step. It will therefore require some practice for you to be comfortable on the foil board and later on to be flying. Stay with me and we will look at how to get comfortable on the board in a few easy steps. But first, this. Let's talk about now how to get stable on your small board quickly. You want to memorize these techniques and then go out and practice them over and over and over again. That's the recipe of success. What are the conditions? What's the wind? Wind direction? Waves? Currents? Are there any allocated areas for water sports? And are there a lot of people in the water that will make it crowded? All those things you need to assess in the beginning to set up your stuff and get prepared in uh, the best possible way. If it's less than 14, 15 knots or more, you want to put your foil mast forward of the middle position. Since this makes the foil lift the board easier, if there is a lot of wind, you can put the foil mast in the area ranging from the front back to the middle. If the board comes up too quickly and too strong, adjust the mast further backwards a centimeter and so on until you find a good balance. A good check of your material so it's set up in a good way is that when you have mounted everything, you make a fist of your hand, put it under the thickest part of the front wing and lift the board up. Then you want it to be parallel to the ground. This means that you have a neutral position of the foil in the relationships to the board. And now we are getting ready to go in the water again. So what I did to prepare to change a little bit from my setup, I got the 1700 and E-type spin that's really nice and high aspect, but I put a, a wider and more supporting backstab to have a little bit uh, more controlled ride. And here we have Rift that just came out of the sea. What could you say about Hi. that today? Beautiful day, it's wavy, it's windy, it's sunny, it's everything. Estamos con amigos, sí. so perfect day. Okay, great. There are many ideas where to put your foil. You have to experiment a bit. It's part of the fun of learning wing foiling. And I encourage you to try, change the position of the mast and, and feel how it affects your ride. Also remember that the position of your feet change when you change the mast position. Remember to fly, you need speed, and when the foil starts to lift you, you need to keep the speed up and level the foil so it flies straight forward. The size of the front wing matters. Many riders have only one front wing, and this is alright, but it limits you. Also what plays in a lot is your own weight. When you have light winds and you want a, you want a big 2100 to 2500 square meter front wing, to fly earlier and it's also much more stable which aids you a lot when you are learning. If you weigh over 80 kilos a bigger front wing is absolutely needed for a fast progression. I cannot praise the 2400 square meter front wing from starboard voice enough. The width of the wing is an impressive 105 centimeters making it very stable in every situation. When you get up on the foil getting ready to ride as well as riding and turning. It's an ideal size to have a quick and easy start in wing foiling. That wing really made a difference in the learning curve for me and I'm very happy that I started with such a big wing. I'm only 73 kilos uh, and that wing might sound to be a bit too big but it was so stable and so easy to start so I started flying and learned to wing foil really, really quickly. And that was my objective. The stabilizer or stab is often forgotten, but you can adjust it to increase lift or increase control by adjusting the angle of the stab. All right, so here we have Diane. We've usually we see her on the foil in the water, but let's hear her 
now before we go in the second time in the sea. What's your thoughts about going in again? Mm, great. I think it's going to be a bit choppy and a lot of people, so we have to be careful. Okay. Very wise, very wise. All right, let's do it. Now, if you start with a smaller front wheel, you will still learn how to fly, but it will take a lot longer and will be a lot more unstable in the beginning. If you want to be stable and get up and foil fast, you need a big front wheel, 2100 square centimeters and up in size. However, I have after 10 months moved on and are riding now a 1700 square meter as my primary wing. When your technique and stability is good enough, smaller material works. I will talk about the progression to smaller material in a coming video. If you have no prior knowledge of wind sports and foils, this play in big time for you. And you must allow yourself some more time to get it all right. I had no experience uh, of wind sports or foils or anything, uh, only a bit sub for a few years and I got it right. So if I can do it, you can. If you come from windsurfing, for example, you have an advantage, but you still have to undo your windsurfing techniques and understand the difference about doing wind foils. As I am told, the easiest way to learn wing foiling is if you have previous kite experience. Let me know in the comments below how it was for you learning to wing foil. Also, if you want any advice, write your questions or send me a video if you have one. I'll get back to you with advice how to get better fast. An obvious but sometimes underestimated way to get in the balance quickly on the board is to rest on the wing while kneeling on the board before standing up. The support of the wing makes you stable and if there are waves, shore breaks, the support of the wing is crucial. When you are getting up on the board, you have your back to the wind, to the waves, and you don't know what's coming. By leaning on the wing as support, you are directly a lot more stable and can manage to stay on the board up to maybe half a meter waves. If the waves are bigger, you have to get up between the waves. They come in sets, so there are always a period that's longer and hopefully it gives you enough time to get going. If not, wait and try again. A stool or a chair has multiple legs to be stable. Never less than three. And the same physics apply to us wing for you. We need a three-point support at all times. When getting up on the board, you hold the wing and your knees are the base. The three, the three points are in effect. When you lift the wing up and are holding it in the wind and you're on your knees or having put one leg up, the wing supports you and your foot and knee make the three-point support complete. When you fly, the wing and your two feet make the three-point support uh, complete. This is of course basic knowledge, but when the sea is rough and you get stressed, it's easy to forget the basics. So that's why I mentioned it. It is vital for success and getting your balance up quickly. When you're practicing using the wing for stability, you're ready to get to the next step. This is how you place your knees and feet on the board. Another basic thing, when you get up on the board and are using the wing for stability, it's not enough if your weight or your knees are not positioned correctly. The size of your board makes the position more or less important. A big board like a, a seven foot board is a lot more forgiving than a five feet board. The difference is incredible. On the smaller board, every centimeter it's very, very important. That's why it's better to start with a bigger board. You do not only have sideways instability, a shorter board is unstable lengthwise as well. So to get stable on the boards on your knees is to find the spot where you have your weight in the middle of the board in all directions. And with the support of the wing, you will be very stable. This needs some practice. If you don't get your balance right jumping up, shift your knee position while holding the wing until you feel the right balance. When you lift the wing up, there you have a very delicate moment when you have a little, very little support of the wing. You want to do this between waves so you stay up on the board. When you have the wing up and are moving forward and you're on your knees, lift the right leg up if you're going to the right and vice versa, of course. Here you need to get your foot slightly to the right of the middle for stability, but not too much as the wind enters from behind you. And if you put it too much on the right side, the board will tilt right and you will fall. Your back knee 
the back leg with the knee is still in the middle of the board. Search for stability when you have one leg up and wait until you are, uh, feel this stability. Standing up. Here it's easy if you use a small wave as you move your body weight from back knee to both legs. The little wave makes the board's nose or the board's front of stay above the water surface. You have stability in the wing as it is filled with um, the wind. Now get your feet in a slight angle to have a better balance. Practice standing like this and work on staying up as long as possible, even in wavy situations, to get your balance right. Your brain needs time and practice to memorize the positions, the movement of the sea, and how to keep your body balanced. Give it some time. When the wind is strong enough, you will get up on foil and fly just standing like this. If you want more power, steer a little bit downwind as it gives you more wind in the wing. When you are flying, remember to go back upwind to avoid ending up on the beach. Pumping. When you have a really good balance standing up, you have the possibility to fly earlier or with lower winds by pumping the wing. This movement makes you a lot unsteadier on the board as your arms pump the wing. So save this for when you have the stability needed. Otherwise you will fall or you will most likely not fly because you do not have the correct balance needed. Riding the foil. Keep your feet always at an angle. This gives you a little bit more stability. Also, you need to think about the position of the feet lengthwise. Feel how the different positions of your feet affects the balance. In general, you have the front foot 30 to 50 centimeters in front of the back foot, slightly more on the side towards the wind. The back foot in the middle of the board, put it on top of the foil mats, that is a good place to start. The balance upon foil is a skill you learn by practice. Now, if you apply these techniques, uh, you will be up flying quicker. There is no doubt about that. Memorize the steps, practice and practice. Depending on your previous knowledge, you will learn faster or slower. Don't compare yourself with others. No, don't. Make your session today better than the session yesterday. That's the objective. Get better every day and you will be an awesome wing foiler and you will enjoy all the benefits of this fantastic spot. All right, guys. This is all from me today. Thank you for watching. Leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below and I will get back to you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, consider subscribing and hit the bell to get notified of new videos coming up. If you want to be a trendsetter, share this video with your friends to let them know what you're doing and to share knowledge uh, around the globe of how this fantastic sport wing foiling is marching on and is catching uh, the attention of more and more people. So support the channel uh, that way and um, yes, thank you. I will see you. I will see you in the next video. Stay safe out there. Over and out from Life Through the Lens.